open your ass, and only when you study the advanced occultism do you understand what this crap is talking about. Uh -huh. And this is what the next, next, next thing is, but you got to understand the lame go to understand what he's talking about here. He says that the all ten sufferers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the eleven cosmic powers on which is the black dot in you, the third eye. They said that all ten sufferers are composed in man, but it says the level of manifestation radiates from the original source. By the use of a neoplatonic formula, the process of creation involves the, perform the performance, departure of one, and the reunion to the one. Now what he means is this. He says that you, man, have all of the energy in you, but there's only one thing that's missing to activ activate this thing, and it's called Neoplatonic formula. Now, the royal art of ancient Egypt is alchemy. Alchemy is the study of melanin. Melanin and alchemy comes, is in a, it, it later on is known as Hermeticism in Egypt and in Greece. Hermeticism is later on called Platonism. And Platonism, which is alchemy, is later on called Neoplatonism. So Neoplatonistic formula or alchemy formula is fucking melanin. So the cracker says that the whole God concept can't be utilized but through a Neoplatonic formula. But if you don't understand the occult science of what it's talking about, you wouldn't understand. You say that's philosophy. Neoplatonic formula that the cracker talking about in the book is melody. He said the whole God concept can't even be touched by a fake ass you, is what he's saying. <laughs> Not unless you got the Neoplatonic formula, melody. <laughs> and that's coming from the greatest scholar of Judaism, a white boy. Now you got it in black and white. In the Kabbalah, in, the, in this Kabbalah, Gershwin Shrulam is his name. Gershwin Shrulam. And page 152. So let's stop for a minute and understand what the white boy just said. He's bearing witness to what all ancient scripture, esoteric, is bearing witness to. Yeah, yeah. From the nothing you get the absolute, and the absolute is man. Which God says, I'm the damn sin, I'm the Godfather. But the man who do the killing is the hitman. And the hitman is you. The Godfather ain't shit without the hitman. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? And the shit and the, and the hitman ain't, ain't shit without the God because he needs energy within him to make it all come manifest. It's a joint effort. And we're talking about two halves of the same damn being. So it says that you are the perfecting agent, but it says, what makes you the perfecting agent? A Neoplatonic formula called melody. That's how the crack of double talking. You gotta understand the advanced science on what they're talking about. Check? Yeah. All right. Going back to what I'm saying is, we're talking about a certain energy that's lining up. So we go to these marches and stuff, and we don't know, go back and look at the movie, Clash of the Titans, where they got Preston standing over you playing chess and directing you to do things. But guess who that person is? It can't be no God over you. It's got to be your own higher self. That's what it is. Your own higher self is lining up things for you. So, now when you break down the Bible, they say anytime you turn against God, you suffer. Uh -huh. But what God are they talking about? They're talking about your higher self, which is God, because that is connected to God, and it's one. So when you turn against your higher self, you suffer. So the first thing you do is, the Spirit will tell you to do one thing, your lower nature tells you to do the other. Right. And most of the time, you follow the lower nature. And as soon as you fuck it, you say, damn. Right. I told you to do the other shit. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. You thinking it's a thought. That's your high self saying, fool. Right. <laughs> I know all. You see, you suppose that done this. That's your higher self. So, Breaking it down and say you got an angel on the right of you and an angel on the left of you. Which is actually higher nature, lower nature. And the angel on the right of you will tell you every damn time you need to do this shit. And it always tells you first. 
Because you always ask the question first. Because you're asking the acoustic records, which is the melody computer. <coughs> what should I do? And it gives you the damn answer. But then you start rationalizing and intellectualizing. And then you go to the lower nature. Oh, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do it this way. <laughs> Boom. You done fucked up. <laughs> so when you turn against God, it's not turning against the God of death. The God of death don't exist. It's only a big ball of energy that don't give a fuck whether you live or die. <laughs> <laughs> Body, which is the highest self in you, is the agent in which that super force can only doggone be manifested in the first place. You get it? And that's what we're talking about here. Because the physical don't exist at all. You only an illusion. You never existed. We'll get into that in a few minutes because we got to go into some other science. We're still dealing with the hard topic. We're still on page one. Okay. <laughs> When we get into the Clone Wars, you must understand that most of these buildings that you see in your, in your neighborhood is closed down or not closed down. Yes. Any buildings you see with windows are boarded up in old yes. high schools, old mm -hmm. uh, uh, political buildings, or old public buildings yes. is boarded up. There's laboratories in there doing everything from DNA cloning implants and all of that shit. And this is how they can snatch a nigga right up in your neighborhood. Yeah. You must understand this in this particular time. We had a big war, so we're going to get into that in a few minutes. We lose is because we refuse to accept advanced sciences. Now, what happened? In the 1960s, you got out and start marching. Although that was a government thing, a counter-revolutionary thing, to stop real revolutionary types of uh, programs, you know, the Marcus Garvey, he doing his thing, Du Bois blocks it. Noah Drew Ali, Amalaj Muhammad doing their thing, Martin Luther King blocks it, which was the number one government agent under the same doctrine of Gandhi that they used, the British intelligence used the Gandhi nonviolent shit to, 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 to manipulate and exploit India. Mm. Now you see the motherfuckers pull over there like crazy. Okay. Gandhi was a government agent. So when they wanted to have a counter-revolutionary, they gave Martin Luther King the same teachings. Mm -hmm. Take it or leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Like I said in another lecture, there was a spiritual woman that understood that this man wasn't right, and she stabbed that motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So she saw this and she said, wait a minute, this is a government shit here. <laughs> Remember, they only afford people holidays who have worked for the government and have been affected. You better take it or leave it alone, because every time you get an argument, the cracker throw up Martin Luther King in your face. Yes. But like they said, if they loved it so much, why did they keep the motherfucker around? But the key is you always make a person a martyr that you want a certain doctrine to stick. This is reality. We can debate this thing right now. We go into the science on this. But dealing with it, we understand now that the civil rights program was a government-funded program based on the Freedmen's Bureau and based on the 50C3 one law, which is over all of the churches, which is a part of the same government entity. Now be funny with this mess. But anyway, dealing with this particular science that we're dealing with here. In the 1960s, Although you got out in the street and marched, and you didn't, and you marched, and it was for integration, which most of the people who marched in Martin Luther King say, if we would have known this shit would have happened, we would have never done it. Mm -hmm. We didn't know where the shit was going. And then in the 1970s, they marched a bunch of them niggas in, Andrew Young, <laughs> Jesse Jackson, and paid them niggas off. And the only one they couldn't pay off was Jose Williams, so they, they put what is called character assassination on him. And that's what they did with automatics and that whole thing here. And the whole Reverend Buffon um shot them. But, but still yet. But so but they but, but still yet it's character assassination. But the key is is this. 
<laughs> Even though you had the civil rights thing going down, the people didn't know of no government conspiracy. You doing what you thought was real. So therefore it created an energy and a vortex. And after a while, after a while, no, wait, I'll tell you what. I, I, I might need that. You tell the brothers, the one ass, if you got some other brothers. <laughs> oh, I ain't giving up my feet in the hall here. Fuck dumb shit. I want to do it. You tell the brothers, you have a courtesy, we got a sister in the back. You know the African rule. One of y'all brothers will make me show seat. Get on your feet and let the sister come sit out. You know. Now, try to understand this. <laughs> Try to understand this. You didn't know that there was that there was a cover up. You thought you thought that it was real deal shit. So what happened was this. The energy got so strong that it even drove their own children wild with the hippie shit. <laughs> right? And Vietnam protests, Kent State, Attica, and the whole nine yards. So the practice said, wait a minute. This shit is getting out of hand. What we need to do is we need to start giving people what they want. So in the late 19th, in the early 1970s, they start putting out all these programs and they start play, paying people off. And they, the COINTELPRO lulled people to sleep. They said, listen, what we're going to do is we're going to put them to sleep and we're going to go so advanced that we're going to be into the year 2005. 2005. When these people wake up in the late 80s and the 90s, they're going to go right back to that shit they were doing in the 60s, and they don't even understand. The revolutionary construct or the revolutionary thing that we were doing in the 60s, we encourage that shit now. Because we are we in the year 2025. The year 3000 without technology. You see? So therefore, they encourage revolutionaries. You see what I'm saying? They encourage you dealing with the same structure that you did in the damn 60s. See, the energy is gone from that now because the crack on a whole other frequency. And now that means one thing. That means the only way that you can fight this war now is through the occult sciences, which is your own spiritual stuff. Now, what I mean by that? Let's reason here for a minute. I have a document here that I sold for some of the people and some of the people who want to get it. 5,000 year old document saying we was going to go into slavery and everything was going to go on. Right in this document that the Greeks stole out of the Library of Alexandria. The day he seen. Now, if we do that, we put things in place so when we come out of slavery, we can utilize to get ourselves out of this. But yet, when we look at all the ancient materials, we don't see no economic plan. We don't see no revolutionary plan, no guns and no bombs. We don't see what one thing, religious shit, or what you call religious stuff, a whole bunch of mythology, a whole bunch of religious things. But you don't see, see, do you understand where I'm coming from here? Oh, yeah. Now let's read from here. If the Egyptians or the Camites knew, based on this document, that we was going to go into slavery, they got it verbatim. If they knew that this was going to happen 5,000 years ago, then that means that these people had 5,000 years or at least 4,000 years to plan to put things in operation so when we became dead and started waking up, we could go back to our original blueprint or model to get some shit to help ourselves out. Yeah. 
Yet, only thing we can find is religious, or not even religious, or a whole bunch of mythology and spiritual things. I don't want to say religious. Yeah. Feel good, man. But spiritual things. So that means the white boy don't feel nothing that you have created as a slave, as a servitude slave or neo-servitude slave, which is the same damn thing. He only fears your occult sciences, which is your spiritual shit. You see? He encouraged the revolutionary path. Now, I'm not saying, like I said before, not to have you no know, guns and no grenades and to crack a bus up in your shit. You got to get him off your ass, get him off your ass. Yeah. I'm not saying that. That's common sense. <laughs> and it's some legal bus up in your shit. I'm not saying that. But what I'm trying to tell you when we're looking at the totality, totality of it all, what I'm trying to tell you is this. The stuff that they left behind and the stuff that he feels is your advanced metaphysical occult science. He encourages the other stuff because he can feed that and he can manipulate that because he knows that you ain't going to unify the physical at all. Let's face this thing. But he knows that the spiritual overrides all the bullshit that we do in the jealousy and the pettiness. So he can deal with the organizational things because he understands the hell. He runs this world on this realm. Mm -hmm. Now, dealing with that, that means that he has to hide things that he, he fears is going to take him out. So the best thing to hide is in stuff that he calls Satanism, right. witchcraft, right. Bold, bold on, wake up. Wicca, Necronomicon, this is the kind of stuff that he feels, the occult sciences, the stuff that can take him out. But we even talk about using it on an advanced level now, even in the ritual thing, and all, which I'll get into in a few minutes. But to show you what I'm talking about, here's a clear example. In 19... 83, 93, White Bar put out a book called Pax with the Devil. Red book, got a white bar on there, put a, put a priest chained up by the neck and a, and, a, and a nun chained up by the neck. Now when you look at the book, it'll scare the shit out of you. They already are wishing the conditioning that they got you under work when it comes to these things. So no, if, you, if anybody ever saw the book that's in red, probably scared the hell out of you. You didn't even buy it. If you tried to buy it, the white boy, a lot of times, wouldn't sell it. But now, they figure, what the hell? A month ago, they put the book back out in another color. It's called F. Jason Black. It's his name, F. Jason Black. And the name of the book is Packed with the Devil. But when you open the book up, all the shit is in there is Bodon, Europe, ancient Egypt. Do you understand, or ancient Kemet, do you understand that the whole Satanism thing is a mask to hide your occult science? So he puts a disclaimer on the first page of the book. Why? Because it's the difference between your spiritual ritualistic system or some white kid going out there and taking little Jimmy, his little friend, and cutting him up, calling that Satanism. That's a whole different shit. You know, little white boy take his little sister and four or five of them crack in the neighborhood and say, let's sacrifice Jimmy ass. And they cut little Jimmy ass up. That's the sensationalism which the white boy, which they put in the banner of, ooh, he was worshiping Satan and all that kind of stuff. This is, this is something totally different. We're talking about advanced things, because you got to understand something about the white boy. 
The white boy ain't like you. Can be in a religion for years. Mama did. Can't fuck that ass. Daddy did. Everybody fucked up. You still some of my God is able. <laughs> you the only fools who stick around in the stuff that don't work for you for year after year after year after year. One thing about the crack. He lives for the loud and he reduces the results. If that shit don't work, he like John Henry Clarkson, he throwing it in the trash can of history. So for the mere fact that he is stuck in so-called Satanism and all that kind of stuff, if it was some messed up stuff, you understand where I'm coming from? He wouldn't even be in it. He said, well, let the fools have the organized form of what they're talking about. And I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. Because we're keeping this system afloat right through the churches. I'm going to explain that to you. The most evil system on the earth is these churches. Yeah. Go into that. You, you got to get with that. And I'm going to show you exactly how the shit works on a ritualistic level. Very key. Now, you're still on page one, go to page two. Now, the white boy ain't getting so scared now until he always keeps an ace in the hole. Now, down in Atlanta, they got a black guy by the name of John Wesley Dobbs. John Wesley Dobbs is one of the biggest black master masons in U.S. history, other than Prince Hall, who started it. John Wesley Dobbs is the grandfather to Maynard Jackson, former mayor, two-time mayor of Atlanta, and the first mayor of this country, first black mayor of a major city in this country, was the daughter, was the son, excuse me, was the grandson, excuse me, of a master mason, Charles Wesley Dobbs. Excuse me, John Wesley Dobbs. Now let me explain who this guy is. They got a book called Duncan's Ritual Complete, which is a book you can go to Barnes and Nobles or Bartles or wherever, you can buy it. It's the Masonic Handbook to learn the degrees to go into the order. The Duncan's Ritual Complete is the name of it. Duncan's Ritual. At first, the black mason couldn't initiate under the Duncan, the same one that the white boy. So this dog cat went and made himself up her own ritual, Masonic ritual book for black masons in the South. He was so bad. So, they, so this cat was so bad until the white boy said, hmm, we can use this cracker. Excuse me, I don't want to say that. We can use this brother just in case we get in some trouble. We can have this avatar on our side. <clears throat> now, in most major cities, they name, they got a Martin Luther King Avenue, which is Boulevard, which is always some old fucked up street. <laughs> we did pretty rock of land now. <laughs> but they got in Atlanta, you got the Peach Street Plaza, which is a big tall glass building. You got the new Planet Hollywood and Hard Rock Cafe. And, and you got Mason. Now you know downtown where the real shit is like Mason, that's the real, uh, uh, the, 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 the real um, fashion district or the real uh, commercial district. In that particular district, which commercialism, or what you call capitalism, is a religion in this country, which holds the country together. They don't have no doggone Rudy Poop Negro. They won't have a black person in that important part of town. This guy, John Wesley Dobbs, got a doggone street right in the middle of downtown Atlanta that runs right on Peach Street. Man. And Martin Luther King, John Wesley Dobbs Boulevard. And it's going to show you that the white bar is saying, just in case we don't make it, we try to line up all the energy that we can get. So when their God comes to dog gonna kill us, they might have mercy on us. So that's why they're looking for a new black Messiah. So you heard of Lord Matray. Who is supposed to be a cat? He's not gonna be black. He's not gonna be white. He's gonna be somewhere in the middle. He's gonna be a handsome person. And he's going to have a doctrine that everybody loves. And that's going to be the New Age Messiah. They've already found that motherfucker. <laughs> His name is Deepak Chopra. He ain't black. He ain't white. But he got some good shit for everybody. This is the, this is the man. Now let me explain this to you. 
Well, what's going on here? Yeah. Let me explain this to you. First of all, most of the stuff that he's dropping is on point. Yeah. Yeah. The bar is fast. Don't get me wrong, the bar drops some real deal Jimmy stuff. <laughs> some real nice spiritual stuff. But you gotta watch it. Because he breaks everything down with this love principle. Love.
that's coming from the outside, and that's what we're going through, a whole bunch of dreams that don't exist. Yeah. It's only what you told yourself it was. But the thing that does exist is your thoughts. So this cracker, they're vampires. When they say love, they're losing energy. And they need you to give them more energy so they can keep this hologram going and survive. So you got this emotional feeling that you are protecting and it ain't aimed towards nothing but the goddamn hell or oh, his love. <laughs> and you putting out energy that this crap can use to stay afloat. Because if you're God and the universe exists in the mind of God, which is you, then you can keep this shit going based on your ignorance by giving energy to some other motherfucker right. who's a vampire that's fucking the whole thing up. Yeah. It's being kept alive by you. Right. So he's saying love, 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 because he needs more energy. Right. Or they need more energy and he's a government agent for the ass. So he said love. Love. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I'm still trying to define that shit. I done love got the asshole. You still talking about love? <laughs> what love got to do with it? Look. Now, in the scriptures, if the God who is to come is ourselves. And this is directed to the sisters. If the God who is to come is ourselves, then we know that it's that it is written in all scriptures. There's gonna be a group of gods that's gonna come and retake the earth and they're gonna kill across the land. Those gods are you. That's it. That means directed towards the sister. If you look at the, if you study the ancient goddess, she'll have a time when she's a nurturer. She'll have a time when she is a, a protector. She'll have a time when she is a wife. She'll have a time when she's a sexual being, but she'll have a time when she's a killer. That's right. If we are in the last days and nobody can debate that shit, <laughs> you have to throw out the nurturing part, because it's in the story now. But for the house don't burn down. Ain't no sense of love and no ashes. So you are projecting your energy in the nurturing part, which is something that's past tense. You done left the civilization, that shit is gone now. Now it's time to redirect civilization, and you can only do that shit by demolishing the rotten cancer. So that means that you have to become a warrior in your thinking. Well, that means you go out and start fighting? No, it means this. It means this. It means that the female at this particular time still has a nurturing factor that is out of season. And at this particular time, she's got to get to the particular time where she don't even give a fuck about her children. All right. Hello. When it comes to getting the job done. That's why I say in the Bible it's going to be harder for women with infants. Let me say that in the Bible. Say it's going to be especially hard for women. Now what do they mean by that? They mean that you're going to be a mother out of season. It's the time to raise back up. But your energy is loving, caring. Save that shit for the other realm. That's what you got to build the world to come. This is the demolished world and the torn down world. So therefore it means this when I say this. It means that you can't be looking towards the future based on your children that ain't got no goddamn future. <laughs> Go back, look at JFK, 1991. In the movie, he spent the conspiracy that they took the man out. No, no, no matter whether he was a son of a bitch or not, that's not the point. <laughs> the guy who was the guy who broke the conspiracy said, if they can bury the president, that means that this whole American democracy is a bunch of bullshit. All right. But while he was getting to the end of the case with his passion, the wife kept telling him, oh, you done changed. You don't see your children no more. He said, of course I changed. My eyes are open. I can't act the same damn way when I got some fucking knowledge. Yo, you see, what the children, they don't know. He said, wait a minute. It ain't about our two little cars in our house. And them goddamn children. He said, what the fuck I'm a damn nurturing them children when they ain't going 
be left with but a hell hole living. That means we got to clean up the hell hole, fuck them children. They're going to sustain themselves anyway. So the sister's energy is still based on building a goddamn home in a fucking sewage plant. So what we're saying, we're not talking about you go home and you throw the dishes out. <laughs> What we're talking about here is a train of thought as a mental perspective because the feminine energy is the energy that is now merged with the masculine energy and you got to come when that particular energy merges there's a certain role that you play in that fucking warrior. But it's thought because the physical don't exist. You getting this? That you got to have what's called a nihilistic attitude. You just gotta say fuck it. You see what I'm saying? The man ain't there and the love ain't there because it ain't time for that shit now. Get a goddamn vibrator and go on about your fucking fucking. Now you think that, now you thinking that this is a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna redirect this stuff in a few minutes so you understand what I'm talking about. I'm not just bumping my gums, I can explain this shit. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. We, and this is for the male, it's for everybody. There's a certain freedom that we need and a certain innocence that we need for the spiritual nature to flow in us to make us into what we're supposed to be. But we can't deal with that because we got too many fucked up shit in this tradition blocking that that we were putting energy towards. That's more important. So what we're talking about is the freedom saying fuck all that shit. It's time to got them roll. Okay. All right. Now, let me go on with things to show you what I'm talking about. And I'm going to go into something in a few minutes to let you know. So the crack of feeling this apology thing. Still on hard copy. He got the movie coming out called Amistad, or Amistad, whatever. Amistad. Which is a movie about a slavery book. So he got to weave that shit back in for the apology. So they get Steven Spielberg to do it. They got Debbie Adams as a producer, Steven Spielberg as a producer, and Colin Wilson. Now, you know that they put the energy, because Colin Wilson is no Rudy Poot Negro. It's a white man, excuse the expression. This is a white boy that is a master in the occult realm. He wrote a book called The Occult. He wrote another book called A Nation of the Peace with Alistair Crawley. He wrote the movie Life Force. One that's dealing with the whole Hellbox comic thing. So for him to be on this particular film, it's got a lot to do with they're seriously trying to put together some shit to try to get out of this thing with the apology. The Oklahoma children. The, no, the bump, you know, they got Spike Lee doing a documentary. So they, they're bringing up all these files of how they fucked up some shit in their own way of doing it. So they're dealing with the slavery thing in their way of doing it. But you got to understand how they're doing it. You see, very key. It's another part of the apology. Now, I don't know if I came here about a year ago and I told you that some, based on some information from the white boys out of Dog on Detroit, came down with some information, either in late 95 or 96, saying that Kwanzaa was a government invention. I told you about that. And it was all set up just to give a nigga a holiday like Christmas as a counter-revolutionary type thing. See, first of all, we understand that holidays, if there's Christmas, there's something spiritual underlying in Christmas, and you don't know what it is. It ain't got shit to do with no Jesus birth. Because even if you talk about the physical manifestation of a revolutionary freedom fighter, they say they don't know when about Some say October, some say the spring. You know what I'm saying? The key is, is this. For every holiday, there's always something up under it that the people who run the world celebrate. So we know that the ancient ceremonies is based on the winter solstice, summer solstice, fall equinox.
equinox, spring equinox. Mm -hmm. The winter solstice, you got the whole Christmas thing. In the beginning of the winter solstice, the fall equinox, you got Halloween, All Saints Day, and Thanksgiving. Going into the winter solstice, that you would have uh, Christmas, Valentine's Day, and all of that type of stuff. But there's something up under it. After winter solstice and fall equinox, the summer solstice and the spring equinox, you got Easter, Memorial Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and in the summer equinox, you got 4th of July, and what have you. We understand that for every, for every holiday that's about bullshit, they are dealing with serious rituals with ancient festivals that you used to deal with. You get it? Yeah. So, to make sure you don't tap into the real serious thing, they give you some shit, some old... Yeah. It's actually a song on the first day of Christmas my true love gave to me some old quantum bullshit. <laughs> now you know something wrong with when I go down to Mother South Carolina, population 6,000, and on the TV, crap talking about Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> so, remember, to let you know it's a government holiday, if it wasn't a government co tell thing, they wouldn't honor it with a fucking damn stamp. Right. Right. They just made it a stamp last year. That's the federal government, right? Federal government thing awesome. with that whole Malala Karenga thing and whatever the deal is, you know what time it is. Post up, post up honored it with a stamp. Now you got it in black and white. Anytime they put their seal on it, just like they honored Martin Luther King's birthday, job well done, gave him a birthday. Yeah. You get it. You gotta understand that. What happened, the, the Nation of Islam put out some books called the Problem Books. 22 Lessons of Masquerade Muhammad, so-called gay to Armalize Muhammad are these lessons. Who is the black man? Who is the white man? The mothership, all kinds of stuff in it. After he died, these lessons were supposed to break, were supposed to come out at large to the community. Clans 13X, who started the five percenters, did just that when he gave it to the youth and the government took him out because of it. But for a, for a whole, it's supposed to go out to the public. But what happened was, the government squashed the whole program, and you know, with Wallace D. Muhammad, CIA Wallace, cut the whole shit up in a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. Then broke it down, so the, the lesson never got out. So now you got your boy Ramboni, you know him as Dr. York. <laughs> you know, he did his murder on New York, and he moved to down Eatonton. <laughs> but anyway, the brother did something real cool. He put out the problems book in hardback form. And he put them out and they, 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 they did a tight set on them. And now they're selling them to the, to the youth or whatever. So that's, that's real cool that it actually came out the way it did. But I just wanted, uh, but, but, uh, but it did come out. Now, do you know that the United States government made a movie on the life and times of Ronald Elijah Muhammad before this Malcolm X thing came out? The movie came out in 1971, same year as Shaft, which was a, actually it was a powerful icon. So you got to understand that before Shaft, what you had was, although it wasn't Hattie McDaniels and Bo Diddley, no excuse me, um, Bo Diddley is, 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 is blues, that's classic, but uh, uh, Bo Jangles. Although you had other movies that came out in the 1950s and stuff, it was still a semi-supporting role that a lot of actors rejected, but Sidney Poitier took all the damn roles. Mm -hmm. That Ozzy and even Harry Belafonte and them say, now we ain't doing that shit. So Sidney came to fame because he took all the damn roles that other motherfuckers would do. Fuck around with little nuns and shit. You know all the movies. <laughs> Guess who coming to dinner? <laughs> to serve it, love. But anyway, despite that, he became one of the biggest actors in history. He just went to the skinning and grinning to do the shit. But nevertheless, he's one of our classic actors. So when they decided they wanted to do the life and time of Ronald Elijah Muhammad, which was 1941, 1942, 
1931, when he came to be with Master Rahm Muhammad, 1971 was what, what, 40 years later? They got the best actor on the scene to do it, Cindy Poitier, in a movie called Brother John. You can go rent it. Brother John, 1971. Now, suppose that Amr al was a man grew up in Sandersville, Georgia, and, he, and he, did, he, he had a fourth grade education, and he went on to be the leader of the nation of Islam. Which of you understand the name Elijah? Elijah is supposed to be an angel. It's supposed to come when people are in trouble. So in this movie, if you understand Elijah being, in Hebrew, the Christian Elijah is who? John. John the Baptist. So, the movie Brother John is Brother Elijah. He grew this, Cindy Porter, he grew up in a small town. When he, he didn't graduate high school, but when he came back, he got taught passports from places all over the world. And a book and a Quran. And they say, what is a man with a damn junior high school education? Being with passports from Cairo, Russia, all over the world. But yet, he only came to town when his family members were dying and some shit was getting ready to go down. But at the end, the white boy figured it out. He said, everything that we doing, he writing down in a little book. He an angel writing down in a little book. And the white boy got with him at the end and said, tell me, how is this shit going in? By fire or water? Sidney Poitier said, I can't tell you that. He said, well, what about love? Can't that help? He said, that might not be enough. Uh. And he said, well, how long are you going to be on now? He said, you know, basically when the winds come, when the wind blows, I'm gone. Anyway, he'll just disappear. Anyway, if you look at it and study the life of Allah, Elijah Muhammad, it's verbatim. But it lets you know that they put this movie out, Brother John, Sidney Portier, 1971. Get that movie and study that particular movie and understand what's actually going on at this particular time. Now, at this particular time, anyone that goes to prison is automatically a death sentence. <laughs> what I mean is, no more than a week or a month with being in there, they kill you, but when you first enter, they say now that you have to give up a vial of blood. This is a new rule. This particular vial of blood, that's all they need is a vial of your blood, or some of your hair, some of your saliva, or some of your flakes of your skin, mm -hmm. to get the DNA to clone a new one of you. Okay. So now, as a result, all life sentences are death sentences. This crack is not bullshitting around. I'm telling you, this is straight up. And so now, they have just made the rule, what, two weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, that all prisoners that go, prisoners that go to prison, they have to give up a vial of blood. A vial of blood. Now, to let you know what I'm talking about, they got a new movie out called Gattaca. Don't sleep on the damn movie. The spirit realm puts out shit for you, but you will sleep on it. Now, I don't, you know, New York, you can go and get the bootleg cop, and I don't give a damn what you do, just see the movie. Go to the movie or whatever, but don't miss out on the movie. Now, 96, I came and I told you that they got a cracker, that everything that they are doing in Everything that they are doing in the hospital, they got a white boy that writes it and puts it in novels called Medical Horror, and his name is Michael Palmer. So if you want to know all the shit that the doctor doing, don't go to the general medicine and all that shit. Go to the science fiction section and look in the section of Medical Horror and get all four or five volumes of Michael Palmer's books, and all the shit in the books is what they're doing in the hospital. They just got advanced now. They say, shit, we can fool these damn niggas. All we got to do is put it in science fiction. The intellectual won't argue it, because he still won't get approval of a white man. So this is how they do it. It's called medical horror, which is the true shit on what they're doing to black people. And pull crackers around the world. 
See, there's a war going on with poor crackers. They call them militia. And you gotta listen to what these crackers are saying. Yeah. You can't look. Anytime the damn government will go to the limit of discount their own people. Now I don't say Jim and them. I'm saying, but listen, when these crackers are telling you that the government ain't no good, you need to listen to that. All right. All right. Here comes the damn poor cracker. The claims are telling you that the government ain't no good. <laughs> and your ass still vote? <laughs> Ain't that the shit? <laughs> Pick on the back of different nigga cracker telling you it ain't no good and your ass still let him vote to about who gonna win the next election. <laughs> like that give a fuck like that like that have any validity whatsoever. <laughs> but going back to this, all the shit that's going down is in Michael Palmer's book, which I told you that he gave the book. His one of his books was Extreme Magic. How many people saw the movie? Yeah. Now, this is what we're talking about as far as passion and love. The love that you think ain't got shit to do with you going, hey, brother and sister, <laughs> all that old shit. <laughs> all that. <laughs> the love is passion. Now, I came about a year ago and told everybody that the most important movie you need to go be seeing is damn extreme measures with Hugh Grant. How they're taking the homeless and killing them for research. Now, how many people saw the movie? Yet we don't have a two or three people that saw the movie. The spirit realm is giving you the shit. Now, for some people that didn't know about it, I'm not talking about you. But some people, I know damn well I told them last year about this movie. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. There's, there's an organization in New York called Russell Partnership. A lot of the women have disappeared from that group. Right. And so what I'm saying is, in the movie, they're showing you what they're doing to the homeless. That's just one of his books, Medical Horror. Now they got out the new movie, Gallica. This ain't no damn shit in the far off future. This is the real deal shit, what's going on. This has got everything to do with you, not in the year 2000. It's got something to do with you in 1970. We old, we, we are new in something very old. You understand? So the movie is Gattaca. You got to go see the movie and you got to study the movie. Because I'm not telling you no shit that's going on in the future. They'll tell you stuff that's going on in the future. That's to throw you off. The future is now to crap up. Everything that he says in the future, he already got. And he's been using it on us for damn 20 years. All right. Check. You got to go see the actual movie and I'll understand what is actually going on at this particular time. Now, uh, to show you of uh, this cloning thing, I told you at first that they're getting ready, they got to get rid of you internationally wise when the international community says, including the Africans and everybody else, which they're getting rid of too. And they're starting on the Caribbean, and they got 80 million people in damn Brazil. When the international community said, what happened to the Negroes, they got to justify it. So the first thing they do is they go and clone a person, a government clone, and put him out upstate New York to give motherfuckers aid. This cat, two weeks ago, fucked all those people and gave him aid. Oh, yeah. You don't understand, that's some government shit. How the hell they know how many people he screwed? Uh -huh. If the hell they didn't put him out there. Then they come on TV in 1988 and told you that they spread an AIDS in damn San Francisco with one motherfucking cracker called um, um, Project X. A secret agent X, this cracker went up in there. Handsome white boy fucked about 2,000 damn faggots. <laughs> and gave all the AIDS on a one motherfucking van and started the whole damn thing in the gay community. Did you remember this? You remember what I heard about this cat? Yeah. Now they're doing it all over again. You see? That's all for a reason. That's all for a doggone reason. On the reason why they're doing it. And so this whole thing with this whole AIDS cat, that's a government agent. Because they're saying, listen, hey, this shit has got out of hand. Negroes are unbelievable now. They'll do anything. <laughs> Because they manufacture.
asking you to do anything. You see? That's also the same. We got we, we, it's a big problem. Now I don't know about him, but I got a friend that worked in the state house in, in Atlanta, and all their legislation is to do away with the black people in some form or fashion. They start with the vending license. They start with that. They start with this zoning, that zoning. And in Atlanta, these practices came in and took back the whole city. But they're living in abandoned buildings that you, you think abandoned. They'd be like paradise because they call them lost. And they'd be right downtown in the worst neighborhood. But when you go into it, it's state of the art shit. Cracking up in the chip. Uh, uh, Sipping motherfucking margaritas. <laughs> Feeling the fuck up on the outside. This shit going on. Milwaukee, Cincinnati, LA, New York, everywhere. They call them all. And the new shit is the building looks like it's dilapidated. Old warehouse. You go up in there, motherfuckers, in bikinis and shit. Put the model readers looking like they're in the damn Marriott Marquis, 10,000. That's the new thing. So they then took over the whole black community in so-called abandoned warehouses, crackers up in their children. And all the money is allocated to bring them back up in there and not to force you out, because they is to kill your ass. Right. That's the key. Ain't no relocation. It's motherfucking clean off shit. Just like that experiment that comes spraying for roaches. That's your ass. Now, let's go on. <laughs> How many people saw this issue? Yeah, the Carter Muhammad. The Carter Muhammad in this book. Uh, now, it's called XSL, oh, yeah. which is love, style, and truth. Some stuff. The soul, style, truth. For me, an issue. Now, it's a hip hop magazine. First of all, any magazine is disgraced and polished. Because number one, it's a white magazine. It's by white money. It's a white magazine. They got Kali up in here, in the ghetto, with a Humvee, with little children and a motherfucking rifle. Machine gun. It says, no love for the, no sympathy for the devil. Now, this might all look positive. They got him right here saying that all the lives of the heart that the black man and black woman should have the best of everything, and they got him with a Rolls Royce. When in this postmodern society, materialism has got us insane. Now, this is the key on what I'm trying to say. Not, I ain't getting into casting no, no blame on no brother, but I'm trying to say this. Even if he don't know, he should very well understand that the government feeds this shit. This is what they look for. The government is saying, listen, we want black people to raise up in one last fight. And they're trying to get you mad to do one last riot or uprising so they can justify wiping you out. And you are no match. For what they do. Well, God on us said, no, God didn't tell you. To, God told you to do the spiritual shit. Right. He didn't tell you to get on the white man level and be like the devil. Right. God fights in God's style. Yeah. You are God. Yeah. You don't fight on the animal mind style. Right. So this is bullshit. Right. This was cool for the sickness because we needed the black pride. But now the white boy is in another dimension. And we still back here stuck in this bullshit. Now my point is, is this. He wants one last move so he can justify wiping you out and turning the rest into slave labor. Now, this, but the thing about it is, what he don't realize is, boy, the black man and black woman is something. Cracker can't figure this shit out. He gave you OJ. Motherfucker, you didn't, the shit turned against him and you didn't end up fighting. Then he goes, in the damn hospital, and you didn't even get the game, because we always protesting for some bullshit. <laughs> Listen to me. Any damn thing that come on the fucking TV set is orchestrated. Right. Listen to me. 
They got a brother from the Rastafari community down in Atlanta. They killed this brother a month ago. Shit didn't even make the news. So anything that makes the news is for exploitation and to try to get you to do a certain thing. Listen to this. If I get a motherfucker up in the jailhouse and take a broom and stick up his ass, hello. Just, just think about this for a minute and reason with me on this shit. See how this, this is how they got up in the spit. If I stuck the broom up a motherfucker's ass, a plunger, whatever she was. I'm a person that. Common sense to tell me that I already got a government right that I can kill any prisoner I want and get away right in jail. Right? Why in the fuck am I going to let the motherfucker go? Wait a minute, hold on one minute. Now let's think here for a damn minute. Because we are always getting emotional. That's how he rules I am. This, this crap has got the nigga in the jail. They stick a damn plunger up his ass. And then they let the motherfucker live to get out and say, we gonna fuck you up for y'all to damn march around with this new evil shit. Y'all crazy as hell. I'm not talking about you, but listen to the bullshit how they get out of here. That's called government. I don't even know what the fuck that shit is. <laughs> For you to reason here. Oh, yeah. If the government of the United States gives me the right to kill any motherfucker go up in there, it is not intellectually feasible for me to let a nigga live and go out there and get the damn city almost burnt down. Not unless I'm trying to make y'all motherfuckers rise up to fight so I can kill your black ass right. off. And what y'all do? Out there marching and shit just like you did in the damn city. But you have to say the riches ain't the ego this time. You see what I'm saying? But no, that's the ego though. Not there. Any other thing we can do, we want to get all out there. And what I'm trying to tell you is, 